とろろろろとろとろとろろろろとろとろとろろろろとろとろろろ Good morning. Starting things off on a road trip today. We're leaving Split, saying goodbye to Havad, and we're on our way south. But first, a very, very special stop. Where are we? All right, as the title declares, this turns out to be my favorite place in all of Croatia that we visit. And now let me explain five reasons why. Starting with a road trip pit stop en route to the actual destination. We are here right now at Opuzen, a small village at the Neretva Delta, which is very famous to be very fertile for all these fruits, like you will see right now, watermelons, tomatoes, like the best, best, best fruits, so delicious, natural, organic. All grown right here in this area, in between the mountains, en route south. And look at these stalls. This place is truly beautiful. And they even have all of these jams, uh, olive oils, honey, everything right here. Orange, Orange. strawberry, and mandarin. Yeah. Strawberries Strawberry. First purchase, strawberry juice. <laughs> oh, man. Fresh as it gets? Man, that's on another level, Let's man. try that. Wow, <laughs> that seems like a ice cream stick or something. Oh my god! Wow. Yeah, like a, a natural popsicle, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Delicioso. <laughs> really good. <laughs> Can't stop drinking it. <laughs> you know, <it's> John. <laughs> Second purchase. What do you got? Kiwi jam. Woo! And and of course one more strawberry juice. <laughs> <laughs> the crew had crushing watermelon on the side of the road. We purchase way too many fruits, jams, and juices, and then make the final hour drive to the second reason why I love it here. We get to stay in Goran's family home, way off the grid. Welcome to my typically Dalmatian crib, Tepikuche, here close to Dubrovnik. Look at this. Look at this view. So technically we are in the town of? Tepikuche. 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 And by saying, I believe that not many of you have ever visited this place is pretty reasonable. Yeah, 99.99999% have never been here or never heard of it. This is the Croatia you never see. For real. For real. Oh, all right, take me inside. Give me the tour. Okay, let's go upstairs. Yeah. Here inside we had the animals like 10, 15, 20 years before. And my grandfather used to make wine, smoke them. My grandmother used to make uh, goat cheese, like literally everything they made by themselves as they have been farmers. Uh -huh. Very typical for this region back then. Life was very, very basic here, very hard actually. That's also why my father had to leave at the age of 13 to work on a cruise ship to support the family. Yeah, in the 90s, like with the war, actually, this house has been occupied also by the enemies. Um, everything was destroyed, so my grandparents had to come to, uh, to Switzerland to us. Here, we used to wash the dishes. Here? We had water. So we always used to pump the water from out there. Uh -huh. uh, but now we have water on top and they have to still deliver the water here like every once, one month, every two months. Uh -huh. um, so we still have no running water actually here. <laughs> so we have to organize it always when we have no water. We fill up the tanks. In here we got storage. Yeah, so this is a very, very old room. They used to produce, I don't even know actually because oh, no I never saw my grandparents using it. In the back, we had potatoes, tomatoes from our own fields. And this is the living room area. Yeah, that's the living room area where we always used to eat, drink when we haven't been outside. More for lunch because it's so hot here right now. Yeah, there he is. So here we have the main room, the principal room where girls will sleep in those nights. Hey, no way. <laughs> Look at that. Here we used to eat all together in a very big family, 15 people, when we all came together from several countries. Here we have a toilet. Here we have a room where we make our own pekas, like a real Croatian tradition. Oh. Uh, and actually up there, we used to have our smoked ham, pursuit. Oh, over here. Yeah, and other things here and in the room below. And yes, today we just use it here to make our meat, barbecue. Life is really good here. Connect to the nature, no internet and enjoy life. And reason number three on why this area is so special just down the road from Goran's place is direct access to some of the freshest oysters in the world. 
All right, our bags are put away and I have to say, one of the principal reasons for wanting to come to Croatia was for this location. When Goran told me that you could come right down to some old houses, knock on their doors and ask for oysters, I was all about it. Right now, we're walking into somebody's property to see if they'll take us out to get fresh oysters. This is a moment I was very, very, very much looking forward to. And we are right on the water. So here's the whole oyster setup right here. Let's see if we can get on a boat and go out and see the oyster process. After a quick chat with some guys hanging out in the shade, we're lucky enough to catch a ride directly to the source by Pero, who was already heading out to check his lines. On the way, he tells us the tireless work and incredible struggles it takes to farm these fancy hors d'oeuvres. Seeing the real food process in situations like this really makes you appreciate what we just passively eat. These are two year old oysters. Yes. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's the muscle and then you can eat it like that. No, Slowly. Slowly eat. Okay. Yes. Slowly. Hold on. Wow. Fantastic. <laughs> that okay. is so good. You can definitely taste the salt. It's brackish water, but it's definitely salty coming out of there. But the oyster itself, there's no fishy flavor to it. It is so fresh or, or, or aftertaste or anything like that. The sign of a real true fresh oyster. And this is absolutely as fresh as it gets. You bite into it instead of just swallowing it whole. He said, take your time, eat it slowly. And you eat it and you can really taste it. And honestly, there's no gristly bits or other things that really turn a lot of people off. It's just clean, salty deliciousness, really. Here we are just outside of Mali Stone, harvesting some oysters fresh out of the water. We have a new job for him, a new profession. I'm moving out here. This is my new Croatian lifestyle. We're gonna harvest oysters from now on. <laughs> if you're not lucky enough to catch a man on a boat, don't worry. There are a few little shops like this, right along the waterfront road that serve up these local oysters and mussels. All right, and after the boat, you can come right up to one of the shops along Mali Stone and get yourself oysters. These were eight Croatian kuna per piece. Exactly. And I got a dozen, so that's about, what, 96, I would say? Quick math there. 96 kuna for 12 oysters, which is pretty amazing. Based on this in California, it would be 25, 30 bucks. And let's call it what it is. Tyler tried one on the boat, not a fan. Goran lived here, has been here his whole life, and he's not a fan. I particularly love him, so I'm gonna dive in. This is a, a personal reaction. And for me, just a little bit of lemon, and they are salty and sweet and delicious. That paired up with a little local wine. Guys, stone, I'm telling you. Stone, Mali stone. This is the place to be. Yeah, you gotta see it to believe it, guys. <laughs> Onward to the small town of Stone and neighboring Mali Stone, which just means little stone. Two of the most Disney fairy tale like towns you'll ever come across. For lack of a better description, I just really like it here. And this is downtown Stone, complete with a castle and moat. There is a salt mine directly in front of me. And if you look up on these incredible mountains, you see the entire border of the town, a stone wall to protect the village of Stone and also Mali Stone close by. And it wraps up around these dramatic cliffs. This entire area is surrounded by insanely beautiful green mountain ranges and then jetting down into the bays below. This is dramatic and it's beautiful. I feel like I'm in a Renaissance movie. The old stone houses and through this small village, complete with an old stone church. A few tourists here, but really not that many compared to Split, Havar, and Dubrovnik. And you can actually climb up the city wall. There's a few people up there right now. Also, side note, as a kid, I always dreamed of having a house surrounded by a moat that was a lazy river. It's about as close as it'll get. 
I'm gonna see if this is for sale. You like it? I love it. Imagine if it was a lazy river, you could swim around. I boot it all day. <laughs> All right, the sun has faded just a bit in the afternoon here in Stone, and I'm going to attempt it. I'm not going all the way up, but I want to make it up at least a little bit of the way up the wall just to get a vantage point of the city. The rest of the team is hanging out having a coffee, but I can't help it. I just, I just got to go up there. Climbing up almost at the top here. It's actually a ramp on one side, but look at these views over stone. A big body of water to my left and salt mines to my right. You have the stone down below and all of these incredible mountains all around. And here's the midway point right here. I made it to the midway point. Oh my God, look at these views. Look at these views. Look at that. Unbelievable. That's where you go down. That's where I just came up. There's a Croatian flag. A little bit higher still. You can see the top of the wall. But these views with the salt mines to one side, the bay over there, the bridge in the distance, and all these incredible mountains surrounding everything, and these little farmlands here in the foreground. Oh, this is crazy beautiful. <sighs> Thankful. Very, very thankful. All right, that's the way down. One more peak from above. Mm. All right, this way down. Is there a better way to start the day with a beautiful, delicious coffee on a ferry on a beautiful island? I don't think so. If you want a day trip from Stone, a great place to go is Mayet, which is an island only about 45 minutes by ferry off the coast. It's a pretty expansive island and also a national park here in Croatia. So the boys are heading over. Eh, like I said, it's a 45 minute ride and we're gonna go get into Mayet. Not the easiest place to say, but a great place to visit. So I'm told, let's go see. Tell me everything there is to know about this island. Go down. Yeah, so this <laughs> island is not so touristy and I actually don't know why. In Croatia it's very famous for having some of the best seas, beautiful nature, um, but still kind of people aren't coming here. So yeah, let's enjoy for ourselves. Miljet is an unspoiled island paradise that very few visitors take the time to explore. It's said to be Croatia's greenest island, with dense Mediterranean forest and clear, clean water. And on the western end is an extensive national park, covering 5,400 hectares of land and sea. All right, we have officially made it inside the national park now. It's about one third of the island. Our tickets have been purchased, our tops have been popped, and now we're gonna walk down and try to get on a ferry in order to go over to a monastery. A lovely staff here at the National Park. They were so helpful, showing us around the signs. Smells like camping at home in the summertime around the Adirondacks. This place is pretty remote. And also there's only a few, maybe we saw a dozen other people here visiting, but it is just 8 a.m. So we're just starting off our day. So we'll see how many people come in afterwards. <sighs> Sounds of summer. One of the most interesting attractions within the National Park itself is St. Mary's Island, home to an incredible 12th century monastery. Dating all the way back to ancient Greco-Roman geographers, the Romanesque monastery has been rebuilt several times and still features its original Roman ruins. The church itself is simply designed, but its position within this stunning landscape is what makes it so cool to see. Just going for a walk now overlooking this incredible lake the sun is starting to come out and you can see the true colors of this pristine water oh my gosh a lot of people are renting bikes here that's a popular thing to do because there is a ton of trails Shoosh! feels good to be out here 
we just hit the national park over on the far side of Millet, and now we've driven over to the opposite side of the island, picked up a little lunch at one of the local grocery stores called Tommy, and now we drove down a little sketchy street to park and walk down a very nice pathway overlooking Italy in that direction for a little uh, more adventurous activity. Cliff jumping anyone? Mm -hmm. There's the coast and there's the cave. There's some people in there actually. See them? That's the coolest bar I've ever seen. <laughs> just right along the coastline. As we walk down, there's a bunch of people here. This is 100% a hidden gem within a hidden gem within a hidden gem. <laughs> Look at this coastline. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look at this massive cave. It reminds me of a cenote in Mexico, but it's absolutely massive. You have a tiny little opening, a few people here coming off a sailboat. The water is crystal clear. This is incredible. And just like that, that is a wrap for this week's episode from here in Croatia. I hope you guys enjoyed our adventures in stone and Miljet from Goran's family's home up here in the mountains. We're going to say good night. If you guys did like the video, please, as always, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of this place. And stay tuned for next week's episode from Dubrovnik. It's a much more popular place than this. So we'll see what we can get into there. In the meantime, travel deeper. <laughs> Literally. This watermelon is one of the best I've ever had. Thank you. Vala. Amazing. I go to America. <laughs> She's coming to America. Yes. We'll make watermelons yes. together. And we will grow rich from yes. watermelons <laughs> and honey. Yes. That's a great idea. I'm in if you are. And then in the 90s, this area also um, struggled because of some earthquakes. Thank you. Salud. <laughs> Imagine if this was a lazy river. Shit. Shit, car. Imagine if this was a lazy river. You like it? Imagine if it was a lazy river, you could swim around. What? What? I would be in it all day. <laughs> you do it all day? I would be in it all day. <laughs> Behind the scenes, Tyler's first oyster on the boat. Uh, here we go. You said this is two, how many years? Two years? Two years two old. Years, he doesn't usually like seafood. Slowly, slowly. <laughs> it's a boy's day. We'll hopefully get into it. I don't know what we're gonna get into. We're gonna go check it out. It's not very cheap to get the, it's not real cheap. And my shoulder looks really jacked right now, so I wanna keep talking. But I don't know what else to say. Just the shadows are hitting the deltoids. <laughs> a little wine, little oysters. It's so easy to make him happy. I'm very happy, very easily, ha very easily happy. I'm hammered. <laughs> the amount of oysters you've had so far, uh -huh. you're basically going to be an oyster in the water when you get in there. And you know what? I'm going to shit out a pearl later. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> uh.